Hi, welcome back to my Allen Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to be discussing Allen Bradley Control Logic's wiring arms. Now, the wiring arms come in two different styles. The 20 pin arm is a TBNH, Tom Brother Nancy Herald. Uh, screw, and this is a screw terminal style. You can get it in the screw terminal or you can get it in the spring loaded. The other one is the 36 pin and this is the TBCH as in Charlie and again it comes in either screw terminal or in spring. Now in North America most companies and most uh, users prefer the screw terminals. It's just the way, way it is. Um, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's all personal preference. So what we'll do is I'll show you how I wire them I use a 19 conductor, 18 gauge, uh, what's generally referred to as Belden style cable. Now, one of the things with the 36 pin arms is you can, they're generic. Uh, when they designed control logics, they only came up with the two styles of arms. So some of them use all the terminals, some of them don't. So on something like the OW16I, which is the relay output or uh, isolated output, it uses a 36 pin arm and you have to put, or they recommend that you can put jumpers on, on the one side. And hole number 17 on this side is supposed to be the common that jumpers through the card into all of these. Now if you're using, let's get it out of the bag here because I don't have a full length of it. If you're using the Allen Bradley um, Rockwell actual jumper, it, this and I'll do a close up of it after, this is what it looks like. It's fully metal, there's no insulation on it, and it's quite thick compared to others. One of the ones that I've found and it took a lot of research and talking to different people to, but this, this is a Weedmuller style jumper. It comes in a length of 20 so you just take your cutters and cut it off at wherever you need it. And the part number on this, and I'll put, put a link in the, or a name in the description, is 1579 and then six zeros. Zero, 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 zero. The nice thing about this one is it is thinner here on each of the tongs that go into the terminals. It has an, in, an integrated insulation strip so that if you're running 110 volts into this card, you know, o, OW or whatever, you have a little bit of safety using this. Now this is not a hundred percent perfect fit because it wasn't designed for these Buchanan style or made by Buchanan but they do fit in there and again we'll do this close up and it's just a matter it's a little tight by the time you get it in there and you have to you know take your time and get it in and I'll show you how to do it on once we get the close up done and that gives you a m room to insert an 18 gauge wire also in with the jumper. So now rather than all your current going through this one jumper in the card, you now have a couple or three different multiple lines. Now I use two 19 conductor cables on the 36 pin arm, so that gives me extra wires for doing the hots or the common, however you want to look at it. The same jumper would be used for the IA16I or the OB16I. Um, and again, these are Canadian prices at this point in time, uh, Mar April 2022. These are $6 a piece from Westburn Allen Bradley dealer. And I'm sure that if you've got a better connection, you could get a better price. So this is obviously going to be a slightly longer video. Um, I think I'll break it up into a couple of points, or a couple of different uh, videos. Um, this is a general discussion on it. 
and we'll just swing around and I'll just show you how these fit in there and then I'll do a second video on the actual wiring of the arm so that it's not really long. Thank you very much. I'll be right back once we get it set up here around the corner. Okay, and we're back. So here is my setup for doing wiring arms. I've got a vise. This is just a standard 4 inch vise. And normally I have it pointed this way, but for doing this uh, demonstration part. Okay, so here's our Weed Mueller uh, jumper bar. And I'm going to be doing this one up as a single ended um, current wiring for a customer. And I'm using two conductor or one pair um, shielded cable. So what, I, what I've developed is the wiring schedule for it. So I always put these in and this is according to the Ellen Bradley wiring diagram. You put them in on the odd end. Now on the odd side. Now as you can see it doesn't just slip in. You have to just give it a little nudge to get it to fit in there. And of course there we go. Now I put it this way with with the curve pointing out this way so that when I take a and put in the uh, wire for the common I now usually put two, I'll just use one wire for now you have room to easily slip this 18 gauge wire right in there. Then you take your screwdriver, in this case it's a 0.5 by 3 by 60 for this one. This one's a little longer, I've had this for a number of years, Don't even doesn't even have a name on it anymore. Really nice. And for the jumper bar side I would insert all the wires that I'm going to do use to begin with and just use my fingers like that until it feels nice and tight. Not really tight, but just snug. And then you just carry on. I've got heat shrink that goes on there and the whole bit. So that's using that jumper bar, that nice small jumper bar makes it easy to add your jumpers in here so that you don't have all your current going right through your cart. So there we go. There's the first video on how I set up for wiring wiring arms. Um, the next video will show how, show me wiring this arm and then we'll also do a 18 gauge wiring arm for our TBNH and I'll show you how I do that. There's 20 terminals, 19 wires and I'll show you where the jumper goes and then I may even do one that shows how the two, I do the two cables on this single wiring arm. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope this was, uh, wasn't too long-winded. Uh, come back anytime. Subscribe if you'd like. And have a wonderful week. Bye.